Hi, I'm Mike with RF Safe. If you're new to us, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below the video. If you're a return visitor, welcome back. Now the way I look at it, there are three types of people in this world. Those who say that cell phones are hazardous to your health, those who say that cell phones are perfectly safe, and those who are completely unaware that there's even an issue regarding cell phones and their effect on human health. Now I have to admit right at the beginning that I fall squarely into the first category. I don't just believe that cell phones are dangerous to your health, I know they're dangerous to your health. Everyone else in the second group seems to either be associated with the telecommunications industry or is just kind of gullible. You know, but rather than drag out the studies that show clear evidence of cancer formation from exposure to cell phone radiation, such as those from the National Toxicology Program and the Ramazzini Institute, which I've already posted videos about, I would like to introduce you to Jimmy Gonzalez. Jimmy was a Florida attorney who died due to contracting three different types of cancer in three different areas of his body, all of them being attributed to his cell phone use. As a busy young attorney, Jimmy would use his cell phone quite a bit during his average workday. He would hold it in his left hand, up against his left ear, and would carry it in his left suit jacket inner pocket when he was not using it. He developed nerve tumors in his left hand, brain cancer, specifically glioblastoma multiform level 4, as well as a tumor in his heart at the same level that his cell phone sat in his suit jacket. He was given a life expectancy of only 9 to 12 months, but managed to live years longer than that because, according to Jimmy himself, unlike many others who continued to use their cell phones after being diagnosed, he stopped using his cell phone altogether, thus extending his life well beyond what his doctors predicted. He finally did succumb to brain cancer in 2014. Now, if a person gets cancer in only one part of their body, you know, such as the brain and nowhere else, I could understand it if they said that it was probably just a coincidence. After all, coincidences do happen. But to develop cancer in three different parts of your body with all of them lining up perfectly with where you most used your cell phone, that to me is beyond coincidence. In fact, instead of calling it a coincidence, I simply call it what it is undeniable proof that cell phone radiation can cause cancer. Now at the end of this video, you'll be able to see Jimmy's entire testimony in front of the Pembroke Pines, Florida Commission regarding the dangers of cell phone use and how using his cell phone for a period of 10 years for well over 30 minutes a day caused cancer to appear in the very spots on his body where his cell phone was most heavily used. Fortunately, because of Jimmy's testimony, he was able to persuade the commission to pass a resolution on cell phone radiation, expressing urgent concerns about cell phone wireless radiation and health. The resolution, believed to be the first of its kind in the state, encourages residents to keep their cell phones at least one inch away from their bodies, to use a headset or speakerphone, and to send messages by text or email. With billions of cell phone users worldwide, it is vitally important to spread the word about the dangers of cell phone radiation as quickly as possible. I hope that you'll take a moment to share Jimmy's story with at least one other person that you know and ask them if they'll do the same. We simply cannot rely on either the government or the mainstream media to spread the truth as their interests obviously lay elsewhere. We must look out for each other if we want to keep us all safe and healthy. Jimmy did his part by speaking up publicly so that people would be aware of the dangers of cell phone radiation. I hope you'll be willing to help. And in closing, please remember to subscribe and hit the notification button to be sure that you don't miss out on any new videos, news, or other important information. Also, remember to visit us at rfsafe.com as well as our other social media outlets. And now, without any further ado, here is a personal hero of mine, Jimmy Gonzalez, in a very selfless act giving his eight minute testimony after having had a portion of his brain removed. Jimmy did this for all of us. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, City Attorney, City Manager, ladies and gentlemen. Cell phones cause cancer. That's what numerous doctors and scientists from all around the world 
have been warning us about for years. On May 31st, 2011, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, part of the World Health Organization, put out a report that says your chance of becoming a cancer victim doubles once you hit the 10-year mark of using cell phones for a minimum of 30 minutes per day. And yes, there are industry-funded studies that tell us not to worry about cell phones or that it'll take another 20 or 30 years of research before we know whether cell phones cause cancer. In essence, they're telling us to treat cell phones like cigarettes 30 years ago. I, for one, happen to know that cell phones do cause cancer because everything we're being warned about by the World Health Organization's report and prestigious university professors like Dr. Deborah Davis fits me. I'm an attorney. From 2001 to 2011, I used to use cell phones a lot more than just 30 minutes a day. I always held it in my left hand, up against my left ear, and I carried them around in my suit jacket's inner pockets. Lo and behold, if you were standing close to me, you'd see that there's a scar on my left hand, the result of nerve tumor removal surgery. If you can see the scar on the left side of my head, that's the result of brain cancer surgery on August 23rd, 2011. That's glioblastoma multiform level four. On top of that, I have an MRI that shows a tumor at my aortic bifurcation, right where my cell phone sat in my suit jackets. So that's one, two, three results of having a cell phone against my body. If you don't agree, just read through the booklet that was in the box when you bought your cell phone. If you have the time to dig through those 200 or 300 pages, somewhere in there you'll see that your cell phone emits a type of non-ionized radiation into your body. Radiation that they prefer to talk about as radio frequency and specific absorption rate. Somewhere near the term S-A-R, you'll see them asking you to always keep your cell phone away from your body because of the radiation. And by body, they mean your entire body. So if you're one of the people we saw on the news standing in line to get your hands on an iPhone 5, please be advised that somewhere in that manual, they're telling you to always keep it at least 10 millimeters away from your body. That's about an inch. Did you know that you're supposed to keep that thing an inch away from your body? Do your children know that? I'm pretty sure that's not what they see on TV or anything that we see in cell phone commercials. If you pay attention to what doctors and scientists are telling us about cell phones, look up what it says in your cell phone manual and put all of that together with the scars you see on a growing number of cancer victims like me. It should become crystal clear that cell phones do cause cancer and that the American people are not being properly warned about cell phones. Now, ever since my surgery, I've been doing all that I can to help spread the word about cell phone induced cancer. If you spend time on Facebook, just look up Pembroke Pines, Jimmy Gonzalez. Go through an album that I've titled Jimmy versus cell phone induced cancer and you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm here today because I believe my city commission can do something to warn adults and their children about keeping cell phones away from their bodies. I think Pembroke Pines should follow the example set forth by San Francisco and several city commissions in California, Connecticut, Hawaii, Maine, New York, not to mention the nations of India, Canada, France, Russia, etc. on this issue. I respectfully ask that you read through San Francisco's Right to Know Ordinance, and I brought a copy, the information posters that they came up with, 
and show your voters that you too are willing to do whatever it takes to warn everybody about keeping cell phones away from their bodies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, very much, Mr. Gonzalez. You'll get that to us. Okay, City Clerk. Mr. Commissioner Schwartz. Uh, yes, uh, Jimmy, thank you for having the courage to come forward to share your story. Um, Commissioner Castillo, Jimmy lives in your district. I met uh, Jimmy and his family uh, a few years ago, and um, several months back I learned about uh, the infliction and the struggles he was going through. What he didn't tell you is the man should not be standing here today based on the type of cancer he had. A life expectancy of 9 to 12 months, and you're in, in month 13 or 14, correct, Jimmy? Yes. And you got some really good news from the doctors recently, correct? Correct. I'm doing well as compared to many other patients who unfortunately continue to put cell phones against their heads. Yeah. And uh, again, I want to thank you for, uh, for bringing the awareness uh, not only to this community, uh, but uh, your, your continuous effort of uh, ensuring that uh, cell phone use and reading the manual is most important. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Casile. Jimmy, I'd like, I'd like for you and I to get together and talk. I'd like for you and I to get together and to talk a little bit more about this. And uh, if you will leave your name, your address, and your phone number with the clerk, I want us to get together. I want to learn more about this. Uh, this is the first that uh, first time that someone has come here to talk about this issue. And I think that if, if we're going to proceed as a city, the first thing we need to do is we need to catch up with your fact base. And I think that this is a very, very important issue. And I want, and I want to tell you, when I devote myself to something, <laughs> it's 100%. So if you will leave your name, your address, and your phone number with the clerk, you will get a call from me next week so that we can get together and we can start talking about this. We can start gathering information and uh, um, see what the best approach for this is. Thank you, Commissioner. How about the hearing earpiece? Better? The hearing earpiece is the, the Bluetooth or whatever they want to call it. How is that thing getting a message from your cell phone? Some, some thing in the ear. Essentially, uh, a lot of the people that I see wearing it, wear it like an earring. So if they say that, well, it has less radiation or radio frequency, but you're wearing it in your ear all day, which one is worse? Yeah. Okay. Well, because, Mr. Castillo, we want to look at this uh, seriously. We will certainly be in touch with you, and thank you for coming forward. Thank you, Mr. Appreciate Mayor. Appreciate it.